None have told this tale before of poor old Samuel T. Moore, a fiddler crab that clawed his way onto the shore of a sandy white beach called Corda Magor. When Samuel took a beady-eyed look around, he knew he had finally, finally found a place where he could spend his days beneath the sun and ocean's haze. Here's where I want to settle down, he said, as he staked his bow into the ground. Oh yes, this is where I want to be, the old crab said with crabby glee. But Sam needed shelter at long last, before the tides came in strong and fast, before the tides would carry him away, back out to sea and north of the bay. His friends, the hermits, all had their own huts, made from cracked open half shells of the coconut. A coconut shell is fine, this is true, but for a fiddler crab, it just wouldn't do. Sam needed some place of his own to belong, a place to burrow and fiddle all day long, a home that would stand perfect, strong and true, when the tides rolled in or the wind simply blew. Yes, Sam would be ready and waiting at the least, because he was a fighter and the sea was his beast. So he set out to work. There was work to get done. He had to be finished by quarter to one. By quarter to one, the tides would roll in, and Sam the Crab wasn't in the mood to swim. So he built a new home of driftwood and stick, not like my house or yours of mortar and brick. The sticks, he tied them in teepee fashion. Sam thought his new home was a mansion. The holes were patched with seaweed and kelp. He built it himself, never asking for help. The sand was his yard, and there was lots of it. He imagined he'd stay there and play there, or just fiddle and sit. Just as he finished building his new home, his claws were wet and dripping with foam. When the first of the waves rolled up to his door, poor Sam had to use his fiddle as an oar. He had to move quickly. There was no time to think. If he didn't do something, his home would soon sink. Already the water was deep and rising quite fast. Sam couldn't help but notice a hermit drifting past. What if he dug a moat around his new home? Would the water fill it and leave him alone? So he dug and he dug with his giant crab claw, stopping suddenly at what he suddenly saw. For what he saw coming made him quite sad, especially after working as hard as he had. The water still oozed over the top of his trench and trickled right up to the foot of his bench. Sam's home toppled over and drifted away, and to his dismay, he was floating alone on top of the bay. On top of the bay, Sam drifted and cried and worried about the next coming tide. By this time, he was tired and fell fast asleep, dreaming of the water that surely would creep right up to his house he'd been trying to save from the mouth of the sea and the great tidal wave. Drifting and dreaming, Sam dropped with a thud. He was wading in murk, dripping with mud. By now, Samuel was stark raving mad. He was no longer crying, no longer sad. He decided that moment right then and right there to build a great dam for the water to snare. So he set out to work. There was work to get done. He had to be finished by quarter to one. When the tides came back, he'd be ready at least. Yes, Sam was a fighter and the sea was his beast. The first thing he did was collect more sticks. He stacked them and tied them and patched them real quick. Then he set out to find some very big stones. He carried them each to the throne of his home. He heaved and he hoed and he dragged them along, complaining no more. He was singing a song. He worked very hard and built up quite a sweat from searching the shore, every rock he could get. In the end, he made 232 trips while carrying his load on his back and his hips. For the sake of his home, he was trying to save before it was ruined by the great tidal wave. One rock at a time, he stacked those great big rocks while seagulls soared above, mocking in flocks. 
One rock at a time, he formed a great wall. When he was finished, it scaled 10 feet tall. Just as Sam stopped and admired the art of his work, the gulls began shouting, the hermits went berserk. They all pointed to the sea and the monstrous wave that threatened the hut Sam was trying to save. Sam had been so proud of his newly built dam, he didn't notice until the crash and the bam. The wave inched closer, it was talking. Was it saying, Sam? The clouds grew dark and loud thunder clapped. If the water got over, they'd all be trapped. The wave rose and licked the top of the rocks. The smart seagulls soared higher in their flocks. But then, just then, the noise went away. The wave, defeated, oozed back out to the bay. Yay! Sam couldn't believe what his eyes were seeing. The waves were leaving, possibly fleeing. He did it! He did it! Sam saved his new home. Finally, a place that he could call his own. So Sam leaned back and yawned a big yawn and fiddled a tune that night until dawn. From his porch on the sand of the shore of the sandy white beach called Corda Magor. None have told this tale before. Until now. What do you think, buddy? None. What was that story about? It was about a crab, and he was trying to make a home for himself because he kept on trying, but the tidal wave almost knocked his rock house down, but it didn't, but it knocked down his first house down. Oh, yeah? And how did he save it? He saved it by putting rocks all around it. And it was 10 feet tall and he 206 and 206. I'll check again, okay? I'll check. He did it. Well, he worked very... He worked very hard. 232 trips. Really? That's a lot of trips, isn't it? Yeah. That's awesome. It's a lot. So, so now can I see your video? Yeah. How many how many thumbs up for that story? Um, three. Three thumbs up? Yeah. Really? I see now. All right. Awesome. Okay. And so you say, so the the person who wrote that book, her name is Tanya. Do you, do you want to say something to her? No. No. Do you want to say good book, Tanya? Good book, Tanya. Yeah. And what's your name? James. And how old are you? Six, six and a half, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Signing off. Bye.